I'm so happy today to introduce you to Dr. Shahu. She will be talking about learning analytics and learning design with us. And this is a seminar that I've been looking forward to. Okay, let me introduce a little bit about Dr. Hu. Dr. Hu is an associate professor in the faculties of education at the University of Hong Kong. Her research focuses on leveraging technologies to improve learning and well being. Dr. Hu leads the cultural computing and multimodal information research group, who has working on the domains of learning analytics, affected computing, and artificial intelligence in education. I'm sure you love all these areas. So Dr. Hu serves as the coordinating co-chair of the Big Data in Education and Learning Analytics Track in the IEEE International Conference on Advanced Learning Technologies. And she is also an associate editor of information processing and management. So let's give a big hand to Dr. Chapu. Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming. Oh, I need to use the phone. Uh, okay, for the um, I participate. Okay, so thank you everyone for. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for coming here and also thanks everyone online to join this talk. Um, it's my pleasure to share um, my research in the previous years and also some new research um, in, uh, that's going on right now. Okay, so I'll start uh, with my slides here. This one, but a play. Uh, yeah, thank you. Oops. It's not. Um, it's a uh, little control of this. Work this way. Um, the talk today, uh, the topic is learning analytics and learning design, empirical studies, and um, future plans. And as those uh, who have know, who know me and my work. I have been working on learning analytics for years. And um, also at this time, we are having a, a big project on learning analytics and learning design. So that's what I'm working on now. Okay. Um, so this is my team. I'm going too fast. Okay. This is my team, uh, CCMIR in uh, HKU. And um, many of them are here. Thanks for coming here. And um, uh, the following work are mostly collaborative work with my students. And um, as you know, in this field, uh, uh, if you don't have any students, it might be very hard to work on those topics. And um, there are uh, QR codes, uh, which are- <laughs> Uh, where you can um, get our uh, website and also our um, full text publications on ResearchGate. Okay. Um, well, um, Um, today, we, uh, this is the outline. We will start uh, from uh, learning analytics, learning uh, design and connections. And I'm going to talk about several projects on learning analytics, particularly on collaborative learning analytics and maker learning analytics. Then we will talk about the new project ideals and some in, um, preliminary work on it. And finally, we'll conclude with some uh, discussions of future of opportunities and challenges. Okay, so first of all, learning analytics. This is a pool for everybody here and also online. So for online participants, you can type in your choices, okay, uh, in the chat window. Uh, so learning analytics is for some learning, okay? And the, the, 
The options are supporting learning, understanding learning, analyzing, visualizing, and also courses, all of the above. Okay, so anyone wants to shout out, shout out loud your answers to this question? Me, so, okay. And online, uh, oh, online participants are also typing uh, number E. Okay, so uh, you are very smart. <laughs> These kind of questions, um, chances are, it's the most uh, inclusive terms that wins. So um, in fact, uh, learning analytics is for all of this. Um, yeah, those are keywords that we analyze learning and we try to uh, support learning. And we also wanted to uh, understand learning. So uh, this is the official uh, definition of the, the field. And um, so then the other light is the measurement, collection, analyzing, and reporting of, the, um, of data about learners and their context. Okay, so it's based on data of the learners and their context, but for the purpose of understanding and optimizing learning and the learning environment. Okay, so this is a, a uh, a definition from uh, SOLA, a uh, Society of Learning Analytics Research, which, which is the official uh, international society, academic society for this field. And um, this definition was from 2011. That was the time that marked the first of this field, the official first of this field. So as you can see, it's very young, okay? Very young uh, field, but it grows very fast. Um, from the definition, we can summarize several things. Um, there are two phases, the learner's data and analytic methods. There are dual roles of learning analytics, understanding learning and improving learning. But what's missing in the definition was the underpinning of learning theories. Um, it's not specifically written, but in reality, when we do research, we must follow the uh, learning theories, we must ground our uh, research design, research questions, um, the uh, learning theories. And um, for the applications, uh, usually uh, we design um, tools to support teachers, to support the students. So when we do learning analytics research, um, it has to be uh, grounded uh, or linked to the uh, reality, the real world applications of learning. So that's why I put it here. Um, so um, actually in the field, uh, if you want to publish anything, if you want to give any talk, um, people will always ask you, uh, what's the point? So what's the application? Okay, And uh, what's the benefits for learners or any stakeholders? Okay, So this is why we actually very much emphasize that this application. Um, and also, uh, um, a lot of you must have heard about the word dashboard. That is uh, some tools that we uh, use to support teachers and uh, students uh, because they are not researchers. And uh, if you want to help them, you need to have some, some means, some methods to help them, help them. A lot of the times we use dashboards which can show the, uh, visualize the data in some way. But um, dashboards, uh, never the only things that uh, many analytics do. A lot of times many analytics are behind the scene, so you don't really see the any, any analytics, but they are working. For example, adaptive systems, they are actually um, earlier, uh, they, they appeared earlier than the, the field actually officially established. Um, adaptive learning systems like the intelligent tutoring systems, they are already there uh, for quite some time. But behind the scene, we actually analyze the, the, the learners' uh, behaviors and their responses to our um, earlier questions and so on. And then we build up a, a learner's model, learner's profile. Then we uh, adapt the, the system, the resources, the questions to specific learners. And as such, those um, adaptive systems, they are personalized. And this personalization, was based on the um, each learner's data. So learning analytics is behind the scene. And of course, there are many, many different um, uh, applications. But um, today, uh, for our talk, um, it happens that um, my work, um, I, the, the two projects I'm going to present are, um, are both on the uh, uh, dashboard. So we'll use dashboard for the intervention. 
Now, um, let's look at the uh, so called learning analytics loop, LA loop. The loop um, is uh, very famous in the field, and it was proposed very early on um, the, in, the, in the field. Um, it basically says uh, from learners, we got the data and then we do the analy uh, analytics. Now the analytics will generate metrics, okay? And then uh, the, based on the metrics, we give the interventions to the learners, okay? And then based on the interventions, the learners will generate new data and so on. So this would be a cycle. And so-called um, completing the loop is actually uh, some, something that's always in the field because then uh, after you complete the cycle, you can actually uh, grow, uh, like spirally grow up to um, get better interventions to improve learning. And then uh, you will um, monitor the students' uh, behaviors, their data, and then you check, you evaluate whether uh, the, the, their learning has, uh, has been um, improved. And, um, Indeed. So this is a very important um, uh, uh, notion or this field that uh, you need to complete the loop and see the learning actually is, um, is improving. And um, learning analytics has flow um, to a, a, a level of subdomains, say uh, visual analytics, which is mostly based on the dashboard, and then the writing analytics. There's some audience actually are uh, uh, language teachers. They uh, want you to uh, optimize the student writing. And then uh, with writing analytics, uh, we can monitor uh, what's the problems uh, the stu students encounter during the writing process, and then um, try to give feedback or other interventions to help them in the process. There are also predictive learning analytics. Actually, it was quite popular at the early days of the field when MOOCs was um, started to, uh, to becoming popular. And then uh, we built up the models to predict which students would likely to, to drop out or to finish, to complete the courses. And there are multi-model learning analytics where we use uh, different sources of data, different modality of data to analyze the student learning. And there are, um, collaborative learning analytics. One of my projects is on that. We use analytics to, uh, to understand how students collaborate with each other and also use analytics to try to help the students to optimize uh, their collaboration. There is, um, the maker learning analytics is very new. And I think um, in some sense, this, this, this term is coined by me and my group. And so we actually um, try to, um, Try to optimize the maker activity process um, by using learning analytics. And um, today we are going to uh, talk about some of my projects. And uh, the first one is on uh, collaborative learning analytics. Okay. Um, the theoretical underpinning of this study is the uh, CSCL, Computer Supported Collaborative Learning. Um, based on the uh, constructivism, uh, we know that um, uh, through collaboration, we can support students in the knowledge of co-creation, co-construction, and also through the interactions among the students, they can uh, improve their criti critical thinking skills and um, uh, to build up the higher order um, thinking of the students. However, this uh, process of collaborative learning can be very complex because they are um, in, involved, the, the process involves multi-level of the entities, say so of students, they are learning as, in, as individual, but then in this uh, scenario, they are learning in, in groups as well. So there are group dynamics. And also there involves um, not only participation, but also contribution and the students' uh, interactions with one another. And last but not least, in the collaboration, uh, the collaborative learning, usually the students are working on uh, some uh, the same task, um, and they are building up something across time. This thing can be a project, can be a report, can be an uh, artifact. Um, no matter what it is, this um, um, this uh, um, this thing or artifacts uh, co-evolve across the time. So. Um, 
all these uh, factors adding together, it's quite um, complex to understand the process of their learning. And then, um, but without understanding them, we cannot really uh, improve the process. So that's why here comes the, um, uh, the uh, learning analytics. Well, um, our work based on uh, a wiki, based on the wiki, a uh, wiki is a kind of uh, online platform to support collaborative uh, writing. So this is a typical wiki. And um, as you can see, it has uh, different components, say the, um, the sidebar, the content, um, the authors, and uh, uh, who last added this page, and also the time uh, when the page was edited, and also uh, the vision history. And if you, um, so for Wiki, uh, one nice thing is that it preserves all the histories of the editing uh, um, history of a, a, a page. So once you add, uh, once you click this link to say a history of this page, you will see something like this. So it's very uh, rich information, uh, say uh, the, um, the dates and time of revision and who did this revision and latest the word count, number of words added or de deleted. And also you can reverse uh, those uh, different versions. You can compare different versions of very powerful tool, but at the same time, um, it adds a lot of cognitive load to the teachers and the students. And here it comes to the, um, the place that learning analytics can help. So anything that you are information overloaded, you, you need to think about uh, technology, okay? And nowadays AI, so how this can be uh, aut aut uh, automated and can provide um, uh, some uh, intelligent help. Okay, so for learning analytics, it can automatically process all the information that's just shown. And then um, we can um, summarize this information in some nice way uh, in, some, uh, in, in order to help the students to facilitate their collaboration. Then um, here's some literature that says, okay, um, in order to facilitate the students' collaboration, you need to um, enable them to monitor their progress. Okay, and also you need to um, provide some feedbacks during the process. Well, we all know that we know about that, but um, teachers have limited time. They can it can be very difficult for the teachers to provide feedback like all through throughout this collaborative learning process. And a lot of times the collaborative project can last for one semester or even longer. So it's an, um, a lot of resource um, needed in this process. But with learning analytics, all this can be uh, uh, automated at least to some extent. So this is the, our um, um, our premise here. So we wanted to use learning analytics to help. Then we create a tool called Wiki Glass uh, for the schools to help the school teachers and students. Um, Wiki Glass was invented in 2015, 2016. So uh, a while ago. At that time, uh, it was quite an innovation because of these different, uh, these four aspects. So, um, and um, it was very um, rare for researchers to produce uh, dashboards for secondary and primary school students. And also um, this uh, tool can analyze Chinese writing, uh, writing, student writing in Chinese. And also it, it, it is built in a very flexible, um, flexible manner uh, so that it can be uh, plugging plug in with um, different kinds of wiki bus, uh, sorry, the different kinds of wiki platforms. So the PD works and um, some media wiki and also the Moodle wikis, those are all the different um, wiki platforms that we have been working with. And besides analyzing the quantity of the wiki contents, we also analyze its uh, quality and also originality um, for the schools. And it has been adopted by several schools and uh, quite many classes because each school, as, so, as long as they know about these tools, they wanted to use it for, uh, by the, all of their students. So we are very pleased that um, the teachers and students like the, uh, this idea and like to that they can monitor their progress during the collaborative study. And this is the uh, architecture that facilitates our uh, uh, flexibility in the uh, uh, 
uh, in the system. So um, first of all, at the bottom, you can see there's a source wiki API. That's why uh, where we can get the data from different wiki platforms. And then um, the, the client, uh, we use the client server um, uh, architecture. The server side we will process the data. And then um, based on our processing, we actually build up our own API so that it can be flexibly used for um, different, uh, different uh, visualization, uh, which is called the client site. Okay, and all the visualization actually was um, built on the client site um, so that uh, it can be fast, um, to, to rendered very fast to, to, the, uh, to the client and to the users. Okay, so, um, Um, uh, in the visualization, so that is the, the part that uh, the user will see. But all the visualizations co-designed was co-designed with the teachers. Um, so it has to be very straightforward for the students because they are in the schools. They um, have limited so-called data literacy. And, and then um, the color, it, it's quite colorful uh, to attract attention from the students. And for this mode, it's called a statistic mode because later on we will have a mode that is called timeline, which is actually showing the, the progress over time. But here is the statistics across the um, different groups. Okay, each, each class will have multiple groups. Then we can have some statistics on the groups. And this one, uh, this pie chart is within the groups. Then we can see each uh, student's contribution to their group work. And um, some students actually reflect this kind of visualization was very helpful for them because that removed them from a dispute, a dispute among themselves because then um, they don't have to argue. They can clearly see, okay, well, someone didn't make much contribution. And um, okay, this is a um, higher order thinking sentence in each page. And to recognize so-called higher order thinking, we will talk about that in the next slides. Okay. And the teachers will be showing a specific um, sentences with the higher order thinking, classified as higher order thinking by our system. And then they can actually correct it by um, uh, click different, uh, different uh, thinking orders. So in this way, our model can be uh, improved uh, continuously. Uh, this is the machine learning uh, part. Um, so how we can, um, recognize the higher order thinking of students writing. So this is the, um, the, the back end uh, uh, metallism. First of all, we um, based on our um, uh, uh, and, and analyze, based on our analysis on the uh, Bloom taxonomy, okay, which is quite popular and it's, um, it's, it's actually important to adopt a popular model because our users are school teachers and they need to understand the models very well. And um, this one is actually, we, we use this one was because we uh, uh, discussed with the teachers and they like the grown, grown taxonomy, okay? And then we just think we need to simplify it. Six is uh, quite much, quite many for machine learning, six categories, and it's not that necessary. So for example, like the students, if you say, oh, you are creating, you are not evaluating, it's kind of, um, quite quite confusing for them, quite demanding for them. But you say, oh, if your this sentence is high order thinking and that sentence is low order thinking, it's much easier. So that's why we simplify these six categories into only three categories. And then we use machine learning to train the models um, and then to do the prediction. And so this is uh, um, the uh, the taxonomy. Okay, um, level one is. Uh, knowledge and comprehension, level three synthesis and evaluation. So this uh, make it uh, easier for the teachers and students. And um, this slide shows uh, how we did the machine learning. We actually um, extracted multiple level of features from the student writings. Uh, lexical features are quite basic. Um, uh, basically, what the, uh, which words are written, uh, are written and which words are connected with other words. And, but we also have some uh, syntactic and semantic uh, features. Syntactic basically means uh, the sentence structure. 
Okay, so you have a sentence head, you have some a uh, verb, a major major verb, and you have uh, modifications uh, to to the major words. Um, so those are um, syntactic. Um, it can give um, the the rules, uh, the syntactic rules of of the words, and. This level is a semantic. Semantic is based on the meaning. So here um, we can have different uh, different relations. Say uh, we can have agents. We can have modifications of agent, and um, and we can have those uh, descriptions and uh, uh, and other things. So those are. Um, semantic relations, but uh, the good thing is um, all of this uh, nowadays you have tools to extract um, those uh, different features for you. Okay. And um, after that, we also um, designed the uh, network visualization to show how the students interact with each other. It turns out uh, this can be very helpful for the students. Because that pie chart only has statistics like how many um, words or how, how many times the, each student contributes to their project. But this chart of the student's interaction can really uh, disclose the uh, collaboration because the students can each uh, contribute like one section and without much interaction, then um, we cannot. We can hardly say it's a collaboration, right? So what's uh, really uh, valuable is to encourage the students to uh, modify each other's work and to interact. So here, in our case, we actually um, um, visualize the uh, revision network. That means, um, so um, if a student revises something another written by another student, then there will be a connection. So in this case, we can easily see, oh, among those five students, which ones are most active uh, in terms of writing others, uh, uh, revising others' con uh, content. And this is the timeline model, or uh, timeline mode, uh, which shows uh, in each group, and within each group, which uh, students, they, their contributions uh, across the time. Um, so, um, this could be very helpful for the teachers to observe uh, which group uh, uh, left behind. And also for the students, they can observe uh, and compare their own group to others. And um, after we developed this, uh, this uh, dashboard, and I would have to say that uh, we actually did it for like um, over three or four years. And each year we actually make it uh, uh, with improvements and modifications. And during the years, we implement this tool in uh, different scenarios, different, different schools, um, the context. So they can be uh, a secondary school, primary school, and um, uh, in different grades, and also different uh, subjects. And it's interesting that um, some, of, some schools even use it for mathematics because the, the teachers actually believe that um, for math. So to learn math, you know, the students need to be able to describe the problem and their solutions. So it's not only about um, uh, having the uh, right equations and the calculation, it's also about the description and explanation. So, um, and we said, okay, you can use it and uh, um, just uh, give it a try. So in general, um, in any cases that uh, involves students' collaboration, then um, this kind of tools can be helpful because essentially it's um, uh, crystallized in the collaboration process that can give the students some um, feedback um, about to monitor their own progress. So um, uh, one of the uh, uh, school uh, intervention was uh, written into a, a article. And in this article, we uh, actually found those uh, intergroup and intragroup visualizations have increased the students' um, group awareness. So they um, understand um, how their group are collaborating and how uh, their group are compared with other groups. Then this facilitated their regulation, so they may take some actions um, um, either to catch up or to remind each other. So this uh, um, in education theory, it's uh, like 
um, co uh, called co-regulation and socially shared regulation. So we can actually observe those um, theoretically uh, defined behaviors in this learning process. And the linear analytics, the dashboard actually um, uh, play a role here to uh, provide the information for the students to regulate themselves and regulate um, on the group level. So um, in this uh, study, so we also summarized um, those uh, very important practical uh, best practice um, and how to implement uh, linear analytics in classrooms. Okay. And um, my next example would be on uh, maker learning analytics. Okay. And, and this time is not um, uh, collaborative, um, not, not yet, but we are moving towards there. So um, here we try to use uh, learning analytics to enhance uh, students' maker activities. Again, we must start uh, from the uh, uh, learning theories. And um, so here is the uh, uh, series related to maker activities. Um, so we know that uh, in maker activities, students' uh, agency will be improved, and then it encourages students higher order competencies. Okay, so it's actually based on the uh, uh, constructionism approach, the, where learners will be taken as a creator. And also the maker activity emphasizes that the, the uh, uh, the task, uh, the maker task uh, should be authentic. That means the students are to create something that has some value in the real, uh, real world. Okay, and then um, the maker activity has been there for a long time. So people are uh, doing like the, the um, uh, like physical and uh, students with uh, physical artifacts such as like the wooden works and uh, different tools. And nowadays, uh, because of the surge of artificial intelligence, students are actually uh, making uh, robotics and so on. Um, but uh, our, uh, we are actually thinking about um, something uh, different or trendy, that is uh, virtual reality. Because uh, virtual reality has been used in the education for quite a while. And uh, based on the, uh, the uh, theory of constructivism, um, it uh, actually can provide uh, the, uh, the VR can provide a multi sensory experience and can improve the uh, immersiveness of the, the students and, and increase interactions. Among the, uh, between the students and the learning environment. So um, there are so much benefits in uh, VR. And then we were thinking, okay, let's try to combine this uh, maker activity and VR so that we can harness the benefits of both sides. So then um, here comes the uh, VR creation. So um, we, what we basically want to support the students to create um, VR products. And um, to do that, uh, we need to uh, support the students. And um, just as usual, uh, we start from needs analysis. This is what um, many analytics researchers do. Um, we, uh, we, don't, we cannot just say, oh, we think the students would need this. We think the teachers would need that. Well, that's not the way it can happen. So in fact, we have to uh, go to study with the students, with the teachers, with the end users uh, to find out what their needs are. And here, uh, it's, uh, it can be uh, difficult to do because um, as you always know that um, in many times the users they, uh, themselves may not be able to imagine what kind of new tools will be out there to help them in, uh, in their tasks. So um, this part can be uh, pretty challenging. And uh, the good news is that uh, now um, the research has been progressing to um, get more and more uh, systematic methods to do the um, needs identification and needs analysis. So there are um, uh, focus groups and uh, the um, discussions. And then uh, we can um, basically identify those needs uh, or um, we can um, ask the, uh, the users in a certain way and facilitate their discussion, and we can infer or derive their needs. 
So this time, uh, the study we uh, interviewed uh, 27 students with different level of performances in one of the courses uh, we are looking at. Um, and uh, in building up this uh, interview questions, we are grounded on the um, self-regulated learning model. So we ask those questions uh, um, on different stages of the self-regulated learning, for example, uh, monitoring. So we ask them, uh, how did you monitor your progress during the VR creation process? And then um, after those questions, after collecting those answers, uh, we also um, did a qualitative uh, content analysis. Um, this time we used the grounded theory, uh, which is a method that basically can uh, understand it as open coding. So we want to um, observe what kind of needs would, uh, would emerge from their answers. And then we finally um, group those different needs into two parts. One is to monitoring and uh, to, uh, to support the students monitoring their process and to reflect their learning. Another part is to actually help them improve their artifacts. And based on those needs analysis, we constructed a tool uh, called LADR, uh, which is a learning analytics enabled VR content creation platform. And this is the architecture here. It's, as you can see, students are in the center because this tool essentially is to, to support the uh, students in the process. And then students will use this platform to create their VR stories. We call it VR stories because that's easier to understand by the students. And then um, during the creation process, the students will, of course, generate a lot of behavior data. For example, they may uh, import different uh, panorama pictures. They may want to rotate it. They may want to add some uh, text descriptions. They may want to add audio or background music and so on. So all of this behavior data will be saved in this platform. And based on the learner's data, of course, we can do many analytics. Okay, then we um, generated the many analytics uh, dashboard with uh, to show uh, their many progress and, and um, their data, basically their uh, and, um, visualizations. Those will serve as feedback to the students, and then the students will um, be able to improve their uh, studies and so on. So then um, this part you see, this is the. Uh, a loop, okay? But at the same time, um, this is a maker activity, okay? And then what the students produce would be a real world uh, valuable, uh, a valuable uh, VR stories in the real world. So then we have the public here. The public can view the students uh, produce the VR stories, okay? And this is um, um, really important for the uh, maker activities. At the same time, we have teachers here. And teacher serve as the administrator in this case, basically uh, um, in charge of uh, the student account and so on. So this we will come back uh, later on this part, but um, this is what uh, we have at this point. And um, this is the uh, platform, um, lavr.platform.com. If you are interested, you can go there and you can even uh, try it. This is the um, demo account. So, and the password is this. So then uh, you can actually log in and uh, basically give it, give it a try. And uh, if you are a teacher, uh, you can think about whether you want to use this tool for your students because it's very easy to use. And nowadays we have been uh, working with primary school students to, to build up, uh, to help them uh, to create a VR. So this uh, is uh, very doable in the school level. And this is how it look like. The platform would look like, uh, once you log in, it look like this. And then the middle part is the canvas for, um, for the students to put, uh, make edits. And then the left-hand side would be um, uh, the, the scenes, each uh, scene. Uh, you can um, upload um, a panorama picture, panorama photo, um, and then uh, this panorama photo will become your canvas. And on top of your canvas, you can add different objects, say media, text, and so on. Okay. 
and you can add it um, anywhere in um, in your scene. So because it's a panorama, so it's like a spherical environment. And after it's done, your viewers will be able to see it just like in the real environment. And uh, we have done some evaluation with the uh, students. So uh, those are um, the evaluation questions are mostly uh, usability in terms of usability. Okay. So um, in learning analytics research, usability evaluation will be the very first step, but never the sufficient step. So that basically means um, you definitely need to evaluate any dashboard, any systems in terms of usability. Okay, your users must feel oh, it's easy to use, it's easy to understand, and so on. However, that's not sufficient. Uh, you really need to show is uh, how effective it is to facilitate learning. Okay, so for that part, um, uh, we haven't shown here. Um, we we have a studies that's uh, under evaluation, uh, under under review. Okay, so um, at this part is the uh, um, uh, usability. Uh, okay, so um, in our system, we also support the users to write a narration scripts to introduce what they have in the uh, VR. And of course, um, nowadays we have generative AI, so we also have those kind of supports uh, uh, inside this system. And this is our uh, learning analytics. Um, this time it's less colorful <laughs> because the um, so far our users are um, uh, university students. So they are adults and they, they don't have to be attracted by colorful visualizations. Um, but those um, what's shown here must be informative. So we have a checklist. We have progress visualization as a comparison to the class. Okay, these individual students to the class. And um, also we have statistics, which is also a comparison of the uh, students and the class average. And so um, the students actually um, have some evaluations, okay, uh, with uh, usability uh, rating and also some uh, comments to say how these tools can help them in terms of their learning. So this part, would be uh, very important. Say, some says this allows me to compare my progress with my classmates, motivate me to complete the task, and um, set uh, expectations on the work uh, quality. So those we can see some are, are really related to the self-regulated learning. So um, which is what we try to uh, help them um, in the process. And eventually students would build up their uh, VR stories. And this is one of the examples. So you can uh, scan this code to, to get to see that um, particular um, VR stories. And those uh, little information uh, cube um, is uh, um, a different additions in the VR story. So uh, in, uh, in, in the VR uh, mode of viewing, you will, um, you can use your, your phone and then put your phone into a goggle, like very simple like, uh, cardboard goggle. And then basically you will use your um, orientation to control those little uh, boxes, okay? And you uh, um, turn, your, turn your head and then you can uh, um, adjust the orientation on this cubic, then you can actually open the information. And oh, there are a lot more here. So what's shown here is only one of the stories. And uh, we are very proud that um, over the years, we have like uh, almost 500 stories um, made by the students. And some of them are selected to be able to show to um, everyone. Um, so now uh, we are moving forward. This is a um, related uh, system called a collaborator, which is to support a collaborative learning um, in VR creation. So um, it's similar, as you can see, similar to the editor we show, uh, but there are um, some additional uh, functions. Say here is a discussion board. Uh, so the chat board actually, um, the different students, they are working in the 
in our team and they can chat. And they can also leave uh, sticky notes to different places in, in this environment to say, okay, you can add something here, you can change something there. So those are additional functions. And um, uh, honestly, it's not that easy to implement because all the uh, uh, team members must be synchronized. So they must see exactly the same thing at the same time. Okay, but um, this has, um, has been implemented. And we even use this system to try out some multimodal experiments. Say here, we have two students, they are working on the same projects. They are using two computers and we are trying to, um, to monitor um, their cognitive uh, cognition and emotions during the process. Um, but this is only a, um, a pilot. So we are still figuring out uh, what's the best way to, uh, to do the uh, multimodal analysis. And good news is that we have been funded uh, um, on this project and, um, to uh, implement the recreation in primary schools and also secondary schools. And the, um, the secondary school uh, project will be doing a collaborative uh, VR maker activities. And we try to um, answer some uh, scientific questions on how students could collaborate uh, for the uh, the creation and also how learning analytics. You know, so today. All right. So I have uh, finished introducing my two uh, projects. Now it's time to do some reflection. Um, so here, um, this is uh, the uh, architecture of LAVR system, and it's quite um, typical for uh, um, learning analytics system nowadays. As we um, just mentioned here, we actually can, can have a cycle um, of the learning analytics loop, okay? Um, data analytics, uh, intervention, and also uh, more data more analytics and so on. So this circle of uh, uh, this LA loop is there. Um, however, as I uh, mentioned earlier, um, here the teacher's role is quite limited uh, because um, the um, teacher is supposed to not only to add, uh, to animate this process, but also to uh, design the learning experience, right? So um, after we have this uh, learning analytics, um, we should have some way to involve the change of the learning design, okay? It's not only, okay, um, the students themselves improve themselves, but then in reality, um, the teacher will have a, a larger role there. So that's why um, uh, we, we have to uh, look at something that's updated. So there is a, uh, um, updated the, the analytics group. And this paper was um, uh, published in 2018, uh, which is six years later than uh, the paper when the, um, the original LA loop was, uh, was published. Okay, so as you can see, the field itself is, progress, is progressing. So in this new um, LA loop, you can see that um, learning design is the starting point, okay? and from the design, we uh, build up this course, and then we capture the student data, and uh, we identify those uh, uh, different issues and notify uh, using uh, using the learning analytics dashboard, and, and then uh, to uh, uh, intervene the students. Then we can evaluate the results, report the results, and then the next circle will have uh, the design again. Based on the reports, we will change our design, right? So, um, and this is a very interesting. This loop is not exactly a circle. It's actually a spiral, okay? So it's basically uh, will grow uh, again and again. So um, and in this part, you can see that uh, we have the learning design actually integrated. Then uh, many of you may have the question, so what exactly is learning design, okay? Um, so in fact, learning design uh, was um, proposed in the LA literature study from the beginning, okay, 2011, that's the, the, that was the first year of the work, the, of the, uh, the field. Okay, we already have this uh, learning analytics, uh, learning design and learning analytics 
Um, here, learning design has defined as a way, as ways of describing uh, educational experience. So, but basically, we are not uh, exactly designing a course or designing a program or, or a test or anything. It's actually design an educational experience, design a learning experience. And learning design is a, a representation or design language that's supposed to be able to describe this uh, learning experience. Okay. And eventually, we need to be able to measure the effectiveness of the learning design. Okay. And in that earlier paper, we actually have an example here. So the, this is a, um, one way of representing a learning design. So um, the, in the middle of the task is of the students, okay? And in the left-hand side is the resources, and the right-hand side is the support to help the students to accomplish those tasks. So this is uh, one um, simple way to uh, describe uh, to, uh, uh, the learning, uh, learning experience, and it's a, um, one representation of learning design. Um, then uh, we also have uh, those um, updated uh, conceptual framework. So the teacher will be the learning designer uh, in the center. And then the, the teacher will have uh, information from the learning and teaching context. And at the same time, the teacher will be informed by the uh, learning analytics. The same here, there are different kinds of learning analytics. And then, um, as an input to, to, for the teacher. And with, with those inputs, the teacher will produce um, intervention, produce uh, su uh, supporting uh, tools. So um, this actually puts the teachers in the center to say that, oh, uh, for learning design, uh, learning analytics can be an information resource, information source to inform the learning design. And this is another uh, framework it's uh, in terms of the time, it's even closer to today. And this is a multi layer uh, learning an analytics design, uh, analytics uh, layer for the learning design. So at the bottom is the learning analytics layer, where um, it's similar to what we have dis described the metrics, uh, the analytics of learners in different aspects, engagement, progress, and so on. In the middle is the design analytics. It's actually um, some uh, uh, metrics or quantities of the design decisions and related uh, aspects categorizing the learning design. We will have some examples later. And then on the top is the community analyte, uh, analytics. So the metrics and patterns of learning design activities. Okay. Because uh, learning design, um, um, it can be done by individual teachers and learning designers, but it's never an individual thing. So because the teachers are in the community, we know that we have teachers network, teachers development network and so on. And uh, those community is very important. And also um, with a well-defined language, um, learning design language or learning design representation, it's possible to build up that uh, community because then uh, we can, uh, teachers can share their learning designs. Okay, now let's move on to this uh, uh, ideals. Uh, this is our new project. Um, so this um, new project is to uh, integrate, try to integrate learning analytics and learning design. Um, so here um, in our um, sites, in our faculty and sites, um, we also we have a, a tool called the Learning Design Studio. It's actually a, a product of Professor Lancelot's work for the over like one decade. Um, so it's a it's a design tool, and it's also a design language. It can support the shared uh, resource and collaboration. Um, okay, so. Uh, Maybe people need it, we just enable it. All right. Uh, okay, so um, it can also support the resource sharing among the uh, learning analytics community. 
And in this learning design studio, there are multiple level of design, and then uh, it makes the design very ex explicit and provide explicit guidance to the different level of designs. Okay, so then you can see uh, here is the uh, um, design analytics, which basically shows the um, um, some statistics of the learning design. Okay, the distributions of learning has the types, for example, and here is the breakdown of the time uh, assessment tasks by has the types. So this is the um, so-called design analytics where we can visualize the teacher's design. And in this learning design studio, there are um, libraries of patterns, okay? Patterns basically means a more a, a more that can be reused by other um, other teachers and designers. For example, this one is a, a, a pattern on a field trip, okay? Um, and this one is um, a pattern on, on a peer review. So if you, if as a teacher, you want to involve field trip in your course, then you can um, take this pattern and do modification on top of it. So as you can see, um, in the learning design studio, we have been supporting the uh, design analytics and also the community analytics. However, the learning analytics part um, has been uh, um, largely an open question. So that's why uh, this new project is trying to um, fill this gap. So this is what uh, our approach is. So starting from learning design, we will translate the learning design to learning management system. So um, all of us have been familiar with, with learning and management system, right? So um, for example, Moodle. Moodle is a learning management system where we can have quite a lot of activities. And those activities reflect our learning design. And based on the uh, learning management system, you know that um, it can collect a lot of student data because students are um, doing a work on the learning management system. Okay? And based on this student data, we can have learning analytics. And then this, uh, we can link all these three. Based on learning analytics, we'll be back to the learning design. So right now, um, this part uh, needs to be connected. Now, uh, let's show an uh, uh, example here. The example is, uh, is a course. Um, it's my uh, it's course is, is here. Sorry. Uh, can we close that? Yeah. So um, the course is uh, called uh, Digitizing Cultural Heritage in Great, Greater China. It's a, a, a common core course in this campus. And um, well, uh, people would, uh, students would do a virtual reality creation. And then um, on the high level, the, um, the learning design of this course can be captured in, in here in a very high level. Okay, it's because say um, it's in general, it's a, um, the course level pattern, it's a user-centered design because the students will be producing uh, virtual reality stories uh, based, uh, and uh, it's a um, uh, user-oriented uh, uh, virtual reality stories because the, uh, the, the creative stories will be made public online for, for everybody to, to look at. Okay. And under it, um, the, uh, under this uh, course level, there are course components level. And the, there are four components in this course design. And under co each co course component, there are uh, key tasks. And uh, different colors represent different kinds of tasks, say lectures, site visit, hands-on exploration, uh, co-construction, and so on. And based on this uh, um, um, high-level design, we can actually um, um, design this uh, in the, the course in the, the new design studio. So um, here I'd like to show you. Um, yes. Yes. 
Um, oh, okay. So here is uh, um, the course. Uh, uh, the course as shown uh, this design in the learning design studio. Okay. So in the, the course information, the uh, curriculum components, and also the uh, the lesson plans. Um, you can show here. Um, so for each of the uh, the course uh, components, we have certain tasks for the students. Say they will need to do reading, and then uh, in the tasks or uh, in the uh, in the lectures, they can have um, like a uh, face to face lecture, then uh, instructional materials, and um, we can have uh, students um, student uh, activities, say background check, self introduction, and so on. Okay, and um, and this design actually can uh, can have this uh, analytics. This this course have uh, different um, time dis distribution of these different tasks, and also the breakdown of their assessment tasks. And also, these are um, time spent in synchronized learning tasks. And this is time spent on asynchronized learning tasks. Well. I have to confess that this course is um, um, heavily rely on a forum. So as you can see, this color is light blue color is forum. So for forum is basically receiving and interpreting information. There isn't much more um, other kind of um, tasks. Okay, so um, please bear this in mind because later on you will see the learning analytics. Okay. Um, Right here, and um, this is the uh, model of this course. Okay, um, so right now, uh, the learning design and the model haven't been connected. So the, the model is manually built, just like as every teachers. But um, in the future, we hope that uh, from learning design studio after we uh, designed the uh, the course, it can be automatically translated to Moodle. Okay, so the Moodle, um, as you can see here, we have a uh, uh, a bunch of different topics and assess assessments and so on. But what I wanted to show you is here. Um, there is a plugin which is not available in your Moodle yet. Uh, it's in our project. So he, this part is a learning analytics. If you click it, then you will see a bunch of learning analytics based on the student data on this model. For example, so this is uh, one of the uh, screenshots of that learning analytics. So here is the page view. So over the, um, the whole semester from January to April, we can see the number of, of view counts of this model. And there is a very, very um, um, uh, regular pattern, okay? And this piece turns out to be Wednesdays. And Wednesdays is the class day for this <laughs> course. So on that day, students are accessing our Moodle like fiercely, okay? So at least we can find these patterns. Um, sometimes there are um, those high um, places, that, um, the, the high bars are on Mondays. So um, I don't know why maybe uh, Monday is something that students, or it's a sometimes students want to study. And this one is another visualization, which is on the forum, okay? So um, each of these dots are students. This is a very large course, common core course, 120 students. And then uh, each dot is a student, and um, here um, each row is a, it's a week. And then uh, from this color, we can see uh, well, how many times they reply to each other. So this one shows reply replies. And we can see this, uh, the fourth week is pretty, um, lots of replies. And the third week is very little replies. And then at the end of the semester, uh, okay, it's actually uh, quite uh, active in this sense. So for this uh, linear analytics, um, we can show, we can see these kind of patterns, very general patterns. But as I uh, mentioned just now, for the entire course design, uh, forum was the most uh, used um, tasks in, in Moodle. So that's why um, in the linear analytics, we can see those, um, those patterns on forum. There's another, um, another linear analytics on forum. Um, those are keywords um, in different uh, 
the keywords extracted from the forums across different weeks. Okay, and there are some uh, um, distinguished patterns that here um, you can see the uh, the fonts are bigger, which means there are more dis uh, discussions. So um, cultural heritage here. Okay, and um, uh, early on we also have the, those uh, terms, but then not uh, very uh, prominent. And um, uh, in early weeks we also have Hong Kong and Hong Kong U tutorial and lessons and lectures. So probably they are talking about this course. And so um, in the, um, and in some week there are um, HTML, HTTP, so something like more on the, the technical side. And later on there are even um, Omica, which is a, a technical platform for building uh, digital galleries. So those are examples that can show, okay, we can see what the students are talking about. So now there's an open question uh, for everyone, but since we have a um, time limit, we may not be able to do much discussion, but please carry these questions with you. So how this learning analysis the visualizations could inform the learning design? Okay. So this is actually a, a very important question here, and we try to uh, move forward is, yeah, so those learning analytics, as we see here, now, can those learning analytics help the teachers to improve their learning design? Well, one thing, when the immediate thing I learned is that I should use more than forums. I should use more than like, um, uh, those activities in Moodle, um, not only on the forums. Um, but now, I, uh, from this, I can see in some ways the students are more active. Some ways are not. Um, so then as teachers, if I want to um, keep the students to be engaged throughout the um, semester, then what um, other actions I would do. All right, so we can uh, keep that in mind and then we will uh, finish up uh, very soon. This is uh, some summarized um, summarization of this talk. Um, we can see that learning analytics and learning design, they are inherently connected and they give each other more opportunities for development. Learning analytics can substantialize learning uh, design um, because learning design, many ideas are very theoretical and abstract, um, but with learning analytics, it can be more concrete and we can let each other see, let the teacher see, let the students see how the learning design actually uh, uh, enacts in the reality. And learning analytics can provide evidence on the effect of learning design. On the other hand, learning design can provide a theoretical grounding for learning analytics and also provide guidance for learning analytics applications. As mentioned earlier, um, for learning analytics, the theory grounding is very important, it's necessary. And also the applications are also very uh, necessary. And for both sides, learning design can provide a lot of ideas and uh, uh, guidance and foundations. However, so far, very few empirical studies have evaluated the impact of learning design. So um, in fact, in our um, systematic reviews, uh, more often than not, we found that many interventions of uh, many analytics has uh, not much uh, theoretical foundations. So that, that's one of the gaps. And um, there were also challenges because learning design um, uh, have a quite steep learning curve. And um, um, in order to um, link learning analytics, learning design, the teacher, would be the, in the central uh, in the central role, but teachers are very busy and they already have a lot of burdens. So how we can actually alleviate their burden instead of giving them yet another task, right? So in, in order to help them, we need to show them how we can save their time, okay? How we can uh, make their life easier and more efficient. Um, and in that part, we need to understand our teachers, so their, their needs, 
okay, and uh, what uh, the analytics would be really needed and really helpful. Okay. All right, so that uh, concludes my talk, and I thank everybody's patience. It's a very long talk, and I hope that um, you can um, speak up and um, yeah, give us your opinions on those questions I raised just now. Thank you very much. So much, and thank you for uh, this wonderful, you know, very stimulating and insightful talk. I don't need it. <laughs> you should be the star. Okay, now we've got only 10 minutes for QA. If you have any questions, please you know, ask Dr. Buna. And also, the online uh, listeners, uh, you can also raise questions by typing in the chat. Chat with chat. There are two chats, but yeah, yeah, uh, we chat. <laughs> that question is that I've answered this. Um, so, uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for this wonderful talk. I think uh, there's a lot of great work has been done. Um, I, I think I do enjoy the fact that you guys have done a lot of empirical studies, bringing analytics uh, into classrooms, working with students and teachers. Um, and I, I think you highlight multiple times that data literacy and how students and teachers will be able to work with all these uh, tools is essential here. So I wonder if you have you seen any, I guess, evidence um, about uh, students, uh, that their, how, how their patterns uh, of engaging with learning analytics tools has changed over time. Uh, and maybe also the teachers and how uh, all these tools may act as an agent uh, for um, uh, their, 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 the change of their learning, I guess. Um, um, so I wonder if you guys have, have looked into that before. Well, um, thank you. Thank you, Lucas. Um, so over time, um, it was a bit difficult um, because our um, um, school intervention was a, a few years ago and recent uh, we haven't. Um, we have, haven't done much, although we are still doing it. Uh, um, but over the uh, previous years, uh, we have been into one school for three years and another school for two years. So we can see that the later years will definitely be much easier than the early years. Yeah, and then um, the teachers becomes more open to the uh, uh, analytics intervention, and students are more used to it. Uh, we can see that. Um, but um, I think. Um, in maybe in a half year, I will kind of have an updated answer to you because then um, it's a, a few years later, as you can see, the world has changed. And then um, the students, I assume that digital literacy will improve, but um, it will be also more um, more critical, I would say, to, to lose all kinds of different digital tools. That's my hypothesis. And uh, Lucas, you mentioned that you want to ask this question. No, I'm going to say that I'm not really going to answer this question. Said I am going to ask the question. Okay. I think I was particularly interested in the question I was asking because I want to know whether um, we know that students' uh, patterns of uh, engagement with all these tools will definitely change. But is that and, and definitely it's going to be easier and easier. But is it a result of they're just getting used to all these tools? The okay, this is a tool that we use every day. And then obviously it's much easier for them after um, a year or two, or is it because the fact that their digital literacy or data literacy actually has to be changed through this process? I, I think this could then be a very interesting question to answer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you very much for a very, very interesting presentation. Um, I wasn't very uh, interested in learning analytics a couple of hours ago, and you have really convinced me <laughs> that I should be quite interested in this topic. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I would have a question related to the theoretical grounding of learning analytics. So for a few times, you've mentioned that the learning theory behind these systems is constructivism, if I understood correctly. And I would just ask if you could elaborate a bit on this, because uh, as someone working with assessment and feedback and who doesn't really know too much about learning analytics, no, quite a bit more because of you. But um, when I was listening to you, I was wondering 
this analytics that they're mostly about student behavior engagement but they are, it is called learning analytics as if you would analyze learning not just something that students do act in online environments so could you just elaborate on how is constructivism as a learning theory seen in this practical design of, of learning analytics I don't know if my question makes sense. Please let me know if I need to yeah, clarify. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, so here, um, um, the um, specific theories, they would be depending on uh, the specific scenario of learning. So I say uh, constructivism is because it's uh, in collaborative learning. And then uh, collaborative learning, you know, uh, the underpinning theory is the constructivism. And then learning analytics is supposed to help. Uh, students' collaboration, and then um, then it has to uh, learn from the constructivism theory to say, oh, um, in this metabolism, what kind of things can help the students um, in the collaborative learning? Okay, so that's how um, it has to be uh, uh, informed by constructivism. But at the same time, um, a, a literature review on learning analytics actually reviewed the most uh, popular theory in this field is self-regulated learning. Yeah. So you, um, because you uh, to provide feedback to the students to um, help them regulate their learning. So then um, in those cases, then we have to um, grant on both, yeah, both constructive enough and self-regulated learning. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I actually want to respond to this question, and I think this is a, this is a very good question. And um, so, so my, from my perspective, the um, the theoretical grounding uh, that you mentioned are really um, in the design of the analytics too. You're thinking of, and you're sort of trying to um, adhere to those theories and say, okay, so if this is the theory what would be the kind of behavior that could uh, that we would be interested in and what we would want to visualize. But at the same time, I think um, the question about what is, um, I mean, is it really learning analytics? Uh, do we know what the students have learned? So we are still at the behavioral level. And I think this is much better than some of the learning analytics that have not actually been looking at or, you know, uh, paying attention to the learning theory. But I think that's also why we need a much tighter connection between the learning design and the learning analytics. Now, it doesn't mean that once we connect them, then you, you that would necessarily be a complete um, sort of, I mean, you were talking about the loop. Now, at least we don't know the, at this moment, there is no learning uh, outcome. And also what's the, the teacher's intention or what's the learner's understanding and so on. So, so I think it would be, to me, it's more towards a kind of, um, you know, theoretically grounded uh, learning analytics, but it's still not, uh, we are not still there at the sort of closing the loop yet. Thank you, Lizzie. Thanks. Uh, I have such an interesting question here, both Nancy and I. Uh, I, um, I also feel that uh, maybe learning a little bit uh, more theoretical ground as like, what you so ask, and it is, and, and it is. But I, I, I interpret um, the fundamental thing about constructivism or construct constructivism more broadly as a focus on how students learn. Um, so when you design LD, you, des you have learning environment, you have learning design, but the, the, that's myself or, or um, a number of people doing it. It's like, we design model, we design learning environment, we keep, but what are the students doing? How are they engaged in this learning design? And learning design people don't know enough. We want to look, so learning analytic is fundamentally based on the, uh, the learning science of how students engage, how students co-construct idea, and we are tracing the process and the trajectory. So the two really uh, come, come, come together very well. So I, I guess the learning theory is basically the belief that students are actively 
constructing and engaging in this learning design and such process need to be tracked. I, I also know and so so I also noticed the emphasis on self-regulated learning in learning analytics. Um, I think it's basically related to what you said about feedback. Uh, uh, the, the scaffolding part, though I, I, I generally feel it may need to be elaborated because I also see sometimes very general use of the word self-regulated learning in learning analytics. So anyway, I, I think that uh, this is certain some yeah. a very, very uh, excellent area, the, the design and analytic marrying together. Mm. Thank you very much, Carol. Um, I like your comments. And I also like your idea of having students step in, in, in the learning design. I think that that is quite, um, quite normal because usually we say learning design is uh, by teachers and by learning designers. But um, involving the students, I think uh, that would be quite, quite innovative. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for the wonderful talk. Now let's get into the next one. Now, that was really helpful if you can share with us your feedback on the talk. And also, I want to draw your attention to this QR code. If you are not a member of site, please, you know, scan the QR code and be a member of site uh, because we have a lot of wonderful, very interesting workshops and seminars coming. And our symposium, symposium, scientists 2024 will be held in May 2024. Okay, see you there. Thank you so much. Thank you.